Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a neaty yarny podcast from the southwest of France. I am a knitwear designer and this is a podcast all about my fiber creations. So yay! Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you are doing well, that you are enjoying the beginning of May. And yes, I have an episode that is almost entirely dedicated to summer tops, summer teas. Um, yes, I have a new pattern <laughs> released to show you. I have two works in progress and one finished item that are also summer teas. And summer teas, that sounds like a summer teas. That's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> trying to say teas, like t-shirt, complicated already. Um, I also have a short work in progress that I would like to show you and yeah that's basically it. I am going to start right away. You can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below so if you want to skip anything or if you are looking for any information in particular feel free to look at this and jump throughout the video. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the yarns and patterns that I'm referencing, as well as links to my social media and my patterns for sale on Ravelry, Payhip and Lovecrafts. That's a lot of platforms. <laughs> but yeah, it works. I, I'm going to start with a new design that I just published on uh, everything and it is the play on t-shirt I so construction wise this is a raglan tee you start top down so you start here with the back and the top of the shoulders and you shape it like a raglan so it's a raglan shape T and V neck so it's a low v-neck. It's not intended to be worn as is. It's meant to be put over a dress, a top, or if you have like a bralette or something um, that you can put under it. That is the intention. And I wear it with some ease. Mine is cropped, but obviously you can wear it uh, longer if you wish. And yeah, so... The basic idea behind this design was that uh, a couple of years ago I released the Nozika t-shirt, the top, which is um, a really basic simple crop top. It's a raglan, it has a round neck and it's really mostly stock in it uh, with some twisted ribbing details. Um, the idea was that I wanted to have a garment that was super easy to knit, super versatile, that you can use any uh, pretty variegated or hand-dyed yarn uh, to knit it with. So I had the Nozika top and I wanted to make a v-neck version. So that is the idea behind this design. Something really basic and simple, easy to adapt, um, and I couldn't help but add some lace details, uh, which you can see here. It's a really, really simple beginner friendly lace. You just have some eyelets here and decreases and then in between is some garter stitch. So the lace is charted and it's slightly different across the larger sizes so that basically it's a bit larger so that it's more proportionate regarding the total circumference. So yeah, this lace motif is then put again on the sleeve cuffs. You finish the bottom of the top with garter stitch. That mimics the lace. And then you pick up stitches along the neckline and you knit just a few rows of stock in it so that you have a rolled neckline. So this is it. <laughs> and this is um, a fingering weight uh, pattern. And basically it's knitted at a 20 stitches per 10 centimeter gauge, which is quite loose for fingering weight, which is what I like to do when I'm making summer garments with wool. Um, because in the evenings or when it's not too hot yet, like it is now, I can easily wear a wool 
top if the gauge is loose enough that it's flowy and that it breathes a little bit easier. So you can use fingering weight with this, but if you don't like the looser gauge, you can use spot weight as well. Um, basically, you can have a look at my testers versions on Ravelry. All of them used a really cool variety of yarn, whether it's with the colors, because some of them, one of them used the gradient and she managed to make the and the finishing touches match the gradient. Uh, some people used just plain colors, so you can really see how it looks. And they used a variety of fibers. Uh, some people used uh, plant fibers like cotton and linen blends and other people used sport DK weight yarns because they wanted a fabric that would be a little bit more um, dense and still get the right gauge. So it's this is why it's really really versatile garment because you can use a ton of different yarns and you can see some of my testers even did uh, several versions, which is really cool and makes me so happy because that's kind of the basic of this pattern basically is to have something really simple, really easy to adapt that will work with an array, plenty, plenty of different yarns and you can just make it with slight modifications, you can make it longer, you can also adapt the v-neck. So you can check uh, all the measurements of my designs are publicly available on the Payhip uh, store. You just have to look at the preview file where you have everything and on Ravelry. Basically, if you look at the pictures on the Ravelry pattern page, at the very bottom, you will have um, the schematic and the measurements. So you can check the depth of the V-neck because it's pretty personal like I didn't I intended it to be very low because I wanted it to be worn over uh, bralettes or dress like I am now and but because of my body shape I could actually wear it without anything under it because like it, it ends here and since I don't have that many boobs <laughs> it would be okay for me but it's mostly a preference based thing so you can see the measurements on uh, the Ravelry pattern page and you can check with a garment that you already own or you can measure with a um, uh, tape measure and see uh, if that's okay for you or if you would need to adapt it. And some of my testers adapted it in various ways. The easy way is to uh, knit the edging a little bit higher and it works fine. So. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, the yarn that I used is Meadow Yarn, which is a UK-based indie dyer. And it is one of those really stunning marled base. So basically, this is a two-ply yarn. And sometimes one of the ply has the black thread, which makes this really fun fake stripe thing. Um... It really, it depends on the circumference of your knitting and on your gauge, but here it made those little stripes and she dyes variegated colorways on top of that, which makes it super pretty and super fun. And this is the colorway against the stream of time, which is lovely, corally, red, pink, purpley <laughs> thing. And I just really like how it looks. I have some other awful colorways, which I think are stunning. Um, these are also amazing yarn to use in color work. I think it's so much fun. If you're familiar maybe with the spin cycle yarns, these are really popular yarns at the moment that are, um, the fiber is dyed and then the yarn is spun in a way that makes it variegated with the plies being different and there's sometimes is a gradient and it sort of looks like hand spun yarn it's quite a pricey yarn uh it's gorgeous um it's a bit difficult to get it here in in france at least i don't know how easy it is in the uk but here um it's a bit difficult but i find that this type of yarn the marled yarn variegated or speckled on top of it kind of gives the same vibes and it's really really pretty this is a, a superwash merino base so um 
it's nice and plump and basically I know that superwash merino can be knitted as a very loose gauge. This um, this was not super tightly plied. The high twist yarns they have a they will have um, they would have given a little bit of a looser fabric because they, they're not as plump. But this this one with the loose ply and the superwash merino just bloomed, and as you can see, it's not it's not really see through even though it's pretty loose for a fingering way. But um, yeah, it's nice and flowy and it's just really fun. And I think, I think I said everything. Yeah, I hope you like it. So it's the play on tea. Like I said, it's, it's intended to be a really basic, super simple beginner friendly top that you can just mix and match and have fun with, modify it however you want. Um, it's really it's really easy to do so. And um, yeah, if you like it, it is um, for the release, it will be 15% off on Ravelry with the code PLAYON. So everything will be written in the description under the YouTube video and it's also written on the Ravelry pattern page. So yeah, until Sunday, you can have the introduction release in case you would like to knit one for the summer. And um, yeah, some of my testers made longer sleeves, like either three quarters or even, uh, you could even make them longer. You can make the body longer, obviously. Some people um, made their lace all over at the back, which was really fun. And um, yeah, you can just, yeah, patch it up however you like. And it's, it's really, um, a fun pattern and I really liked um, designing it and yeah I think that is it I really hope you like it and I'm going to move on to a work in progress and so I want to show you um, my Antarsia summer top <laughs> which is again a summer t-shirt and in the latest episode I showed you this t-shirt which is now finished so the story behind this with that was that i saw on instagram uh an instagrammer um reagan called per perus project i'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it but basically she was wearing a really fun t-shirt with was stripes but with different colors in the striping and some of you found it it was a t uh, made well uh t-shirt uh, which I should have known because I should have guessed because she, that, that, I can't speak. Because that Instagrammer, she wears a lot of made well. Um, so I should have guessed. But, um, this t-shirt inspired me to try and do something like this knitting wise and play with intarsia. So this is a really simple drop shoulder stockinette striped tee and basically on the upper body you can have fun mixing and matching stripes. So this is my neutral sample because I'm going to show you a second one. I knitted it in BC Garn Bio Balance which is a blend of wool and cotton and basically you start at the top with some short rows to shape the shoulders and then you knit this portion in intarsia and so intarsia is really simple if you never knitted it you basically are knitting a block of different colors so what happens is that here was I, while I was knitting this portion on this section I had two yarn balls attached so the gray one and the black on this section when I reached here to go on the following section you twist the yarn strands basically this is the only thing you need to do in intarsia is when you come across the across the place where the color changes, you just twist the yarns together so that you attach the two pieces and that's it. And then you switch to having two other yarn balls. So one for the black and one for the gray, because as you can see, they are reversed. So when you are on, on one row, you you're not doing like this basically so it's yeah you have to change and then when i reached the other intarsia point here 
I decided to have the same main color go over the two shoulders. So I only needed to change here with the small stripes. So I only had one bow for the um, golden stripe. So yeah, that's just how you do in Tarsia. You just have to place your yarns. Uh, basically, I, I put them on a table in the right position and you just need to make sure not to twist them. Uh, and to make a mess basically but it's super simple and it's quite fun so I just really like this principle because yeah like I explained to you in the latest episode the possibilities are endless you can just reverse the stripes like I did here compared to my main body color or you can just change completely the colors here I just changed the striped color you can choose two completely different colors you can just reverse the striped the stripes you can just make a change on one shoulder have just one accent shoulder or you can just make this a really plain two color striped t-shirt it will work just as well and um yeah this is uh this is what it looks like i took pictures before i started filming the podcast and um i hope some of them are okay because that, that's kind of the thing you <laughs> you take a hundred photographs and then you go through them and something is wrong with your face <laughs> in 90% of them so you're like mm. and um yeah I knitted uh everything and it's now completed and blocked so you make the finishing of the cuffs and color and hem basically it's a folded over stockinette hem so you knit a bit of stockinette until the desired length for your cuff you make a row of pearls, then you knit again stockinette and you fold it over and you seam it down. Basically, you, you attach the live stitches to the inside. It's really easy to do. And I choose to have the main color of the corresponding section be the, the color for the cuff. And I know in the last episode, I asked whether I should use the, the gold one here and I know a lot of people preferred the gold one but I just couldn't I don't know it would have been maybe a little bit brighter but it it just didn't work um, just I couldn't uh, get past the fact that it wasn't coherent uh, because uh, yeah it's it would not have been like in the same like in the other places where it's the main color that becomes the thing so yeah i ended up doing it in black as well and it's um it maybe it makes the thing a little bit more um easy to wear as well which is nice and yeah it just means that i have a lot of this gorgeous color left over which uh, i might buy a couple more skeins and actually make a full project with it someday because i just really like the color but yeah so this is my neutral sample and I'm not gonna fold it. and I started knitting a second sample which will be a colorful sample and basically it, it is the colors of the initial t-shirt that I saw on Instagram because I really wanted it <laughs> in these colors and careful maybe put on sunglasses or something because wow <laughs> um yeah but this is how it is and yeah as you can see on this one what happens is basically one shoulder is two completely different colors and on the other shoulder i kept the same stripe color but i changed the main color and yeah so i've done all of it i've also finished the edges because i want to i'm just going to put it on a the thing to hold the clothes on a hanger something like this to take a picture and probably I want to try and start the I need to grade the pattern and finish it and everything and I hope to finish it this week so I can start the test soon and um, yeah, I'm just on the body and it's just gonna be exactly like the other one. I also um, did a tighter neckline, 
slightly. Um, basically, when you knit the front here, after you've done the short rows, you have a bit where you knit straight before starting to increase and create the curve. Um, and basically, you can knit this straight portion longer or shorter, and this will make a lower scoop neckline or a tighter one, however you want. And I decided to make it slightly um, higher in my color sample. So that will also be written in the pattern, basically. So you can adapt it however you want. And yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> the colors are so popping and so, so nice. Um, in, in the um, original t-shirt, it's not really red. It seems to be like a salmon, a dark salmon pink. And this is like a mint green or sage green. Um, but I just made it with the colors I could find in the yarn I wanted to use, which is Landlust Summerside. <laughs> so if you've seen some of my previous episodes, you will have heard me rave about this yarn, which I love so, so much. Um, we're currently test knitting a design of mine that will come out in the end of June in this yarn. It's a blend of cotton and silk. I adore it. It's lovely. It's drapey. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's light. It's uh, amazing. And uh, yeah, I just really wanted to use this again for this top. So basically I took the leftovers from the previous design, which is the dark blue and the cream here. And I ordered uh, the other colors to match and here we go. And I love this fabric so much. This is, this is becoming my favorite summer yarn, definitely, uh, with maybe pure linen, but it's a bit easier to knit with than linen. I think what I need to do to test it is I need to try textures like lace or maybe some twisted stitches cables, you know, the flat cables. Um, and if it looks good in this yarn, then it would be 100% perfect. Because so far I have mostly done stockinette. And I love linen in lace. So it would have to work as well for lace for it to be my true favorite summer yarn but it's getting close it's getting close um i hope to release this in july um i it's so addictive <laughs> you can see i've knitted i've knitted one in like the neutral one was knitted in one week and i've done all of the other one in four days i think it's really addictive um and i am um, yeah uh it will be um ready for july for sure but I, I like I had to change some of my schedule anyway for September, so that is why it will work for July. Yeah, I because September, as it was planned, I, I had like four designs, but four really cool big designs that I would I want to give a ton of attention to, and I hope people will like them. So it it was absurd. <laughs> so I just move things around and made some place and I ended up uh, moving this to possibly July um, so that you will have it for the summer if you're in the northern hemisphere like me. So yeah, I'm going to move on to another work in progress and maybe we can take a break from the summer t-shirts, right? Um, I have advanced on my triangular shawl. So I have been designing a shawl using a single yarn in a blend of merino and mohair, which is really, really cool because the fluff of the single, because single yarns tend to blush a little bit more, blush, way blush, <laughs> bloom a little bit more, and the fluff of the mohair, it just really makes an interesting texture. It is, it is really fun. And so I have been designing this shawl kind of on the impro. Um, basically, I wanted a triangular shawl. I know approximately the outline of the different sections, but what I'm doing is that 
when I'm coming to a new, when I want to change, I just look through some of my stitch dictionaries. I just try some things. I try to modify some stitch motifs and I end up picking up uh, what works on the go. And yes, so this is how it looks so far. So it's a bit difficult to show because it's a triangular shawl. So it's like, it's like this normally, you know, with the point downwards, but yeah. I want it to be big, um, mostly because I have like three skeins. I have two skeins of this main color and one skein of this contrast color. It will be easy to make three colors um, because basically you just have a section every time so you can just change color whenever you want. But I think last time I had knitted um, up until like here. so. This first section, which I love, was the brioche and twisted stitch section that I told you about already. So, how lovely. Um, a row of bubbles in the contrast color. And then I ended up making some smoking on the twisted ribbing. So this, the smoking thing is just wrapping stitches with your yarn, basically. It's really easy to do. And then what I'm currently doing is... Well, I did a couple of stripes and now I'm making some sort of a tweed motif, which is like I'm um, playing around. Basically, you slip stitches, sometimes with the yarn in front, sometimes with the yarn in back, and then you do some pearls here. So yeah, basically it's a mix of color blips and texture blips. I really like these types of stitches. I find it so much fun. Um, and yeah, I modified it a little bit and I ended up having something like this, which I really like. I find it really fun and um, I'm really into these textures lately and you might see them here and there. Yeah, so I think I'm going to continue this for a while. It looks so... What I like about these textures is that it looks so different if you look at it from afar like this, see? And then the closer you get, you actually see all the little textures. Really curious to see how it's going to look once it's blocked. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to continue this for a while. And then I don't know if I might do another section, plain section with this. Maybe another smoking section, though I don't know, because I kind of want to do something different every time. Because I'm having so much fun with these, like, patchwork type patterns. Um, it's something I'm really in the mood for. It's a bit the same principle with the intarsia tea. Like, you just put colors together, like patches of colors or textures together, and you just, it's a game of, Finding something that is new every time and that is really fun to knit because it's different, right? It's varied and I just love changing when I'm knitting and not doing the same thing all the time. And at the same time, all together, it needs to have a bigger picture that is smooth and looks effortless, even though the way I like to design these things is on the go. So yeah, it's a, it's a really fun exercise. I love the result. I already have a shawl that is currently being test knitted that will be released this, in September that uses sort of the same idea. And yeah, I just find it so much fun. And um, this is how it looks so far. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna make that tweed for a long time because I've it's really fun to knit. You just slip the stitches, you make knit pearls. It's like one one color uh, per row, obviously. And um, yeah, it's really, really fun. And um, this also should be ready for July, I think. I think, unless uh, <laughs> something impromptu happens. But yeah. So, that was my shawl. And I have another work in progress to show you, which is the new one. 
which is another summer t-shirt, yes. I, um, with my friend Annelise, we uh, decided to knit a top together. And it's a top that was published in this pom-pom issue, with, which is issue 36, um, I think. And it is the Four Quarters um, top by Julie Robinson. Julie Robinson. I'm saying it very Frenchly, even though I don't know that she has anything to do with the French. But yeah, this is this lovely top. I really loved it. I instantly fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. And uh, my friend and Lisa as well. And so we decided that we would knit it together at some point. And the point is now. <laughs> um, so, um, it's really fun. Um, it's quite a peculiar construction. Basically, um, you knit one part, the other part, at the bottom of each part you have a very long uh, tie that you're gonna wrap around and then things are seamed at the center here and on the uh, side and um, yeah it's a, a bit difficult to visualize at first what you're doing um, but yeah like usual you just follow the instructions and things work. So the original pattern is knitted with Lang Yarns Lino, which is a pure linen, which is sort of a sport weight, decay weight thing. Uh, the gauge is a bit odd. <laughs> the gauge is 19 stitches, 19.5 stitches per 21 rows. And in stock in it, and I can't get that in stock in it. I do have square stitches when I'm knitting some textures or color work. Uh, but in stock in that, there's no way I'm getting that row gauge. So it's a, it's a bit odd. Um, and I couldn't, I would have liked to try long yarns, Lino, but it was a bit expensive. Um, the thing is, you're, you need four colors, right? And since you are knitting the ties, which are very long, you need the same amount of yarn for each color. And so, it, like for my size, it's eight balls of yarn. For the larger sizes, it's 12. And I I think I could get long yarns lino for eight euros a bowl. So it was a bit too much <laughs> at the time. Um, so I decided to take the opportunity to try um, one of Katya linen yarns, because I hadn't yet. So I tried Katya linen, uh, which is a blend of 53% cotton, and uh, forty-seven uh, percent. It, it doesn't want to focus. Forty-seven percent linen, and it has about the same meterage as the long lino. It has one hundred and twelve meters per fifty grams, which was about the same thing. Um, so I thought it would make a good match, and so this is how the yarn looks. It's. It's um, a bit splitty. Um, it's um, I, I don't tend to split yarns even when they're splitty. Uh, uh, splitty. <laughs> I think it depends as well. Well, the angle with which your needle is going in. Some people tend to split very easily. I don't, but I can see that if you use pointy needles and you have a tendency to split yarns, that would split a bit. So. I have knitted one part. So basically you knit one bit, you make the tie, you knit one bit, you make the tie. I have knitted one bit and it looks really funny. It's really fun because you just don't really know where you're going and it's intriguing. So let me try and put it in a way that makes sense. So you, no, that doesn't make sense, Audrey. You start here at the bottom here and then you cast on stitches on the edge to make a slant then you make some short rows here to have a dart on the bust and you knit straight and you start having the v-neck shaping so if i can put it over myself maybe that will be a little bit easier to tell so you see this is how it ends up being and you start having the v-neck with an i-cord edging and it's the I-cords that I don't like, which are like 
slipping stitches part wise knit wise and I don't like this eye cords because um I always forget which side is which instructions I prefer to make my eye cords by slipping the three stitches together because then you just do the same thing all the time but yeah I was a good student and I did the eye cord as instructed it makes a bit of a tighter eye cord and then you knit, you cast on stitches here, which will become the sleeve, basically. Then you knit here, you make some short rows for the shoulder, and then basically you run the back, and once you reach the sleeve length, you cast off those stitches, and then you make the back. And then it will be seamed together like so. <laughs> And yeah, so this is one part and then I need to pick up stitches here and make the tie. I haven't read the complete instructions yet, so I'm not sure how you make the tie exactly. I think there are some short rows to make it like a triangle. I'll see. Um, it's quite long. <laughs> and then you do the same thing on the other side and then you will seam everything. Um, I'm unsure of how I will block the things <laughs> because um, the pattern says to steam block. I really don't have the proper installation to steam block things, but I would like to try. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to now. We'll see. Um, so yeah, the the yarn is nice. It is. It feels cottony, but it has the drape of the linen. It makes a nice fabric for plant fibers. It's um. I'm not as in love with it as I am with the um, cotton and silk blend that I just showed you, but this is fun and I'm really curious to see how it blocks. And so the colors that I'm using are, I'm going to make the tie here in this brown color, and then I'm going to make the other half in natural and the tie in red. So, Yes, these are my colors, basically. I find them really fun together. I had a really hard time picking colors. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm knitting at the moment. And um, like I said, it's quite fun. I'm waiting for my friend and in any case, I can't knit on it during the weekdays because I gotta work. Uh, but um, I think it's gonna be a really nice uh, summer summer top to wear. And I think that's it. I think I've said everything uh, for this episode. And um, yeah, uh, everything about what I've been knitting. I um, will end this episode talking a little bit about my Patreon page uh, because it's a new month. So I have a Patreon page where you can support me. Uh, basically, Patreon allows you to subscribe to uh, creators of your choice and you pay um, a little uh, monthly uh, subscription uh, depending on what you chose and you get rewards for it. And uh, there's no... Um, you don't have to stay for a definite period of time. You can just come for only one month and then leave you can stay however you long you want you can change levels of subscriptions so in my case i have three levels which is two euros five euros and ten euros and starting from the middle one so with five euros per month you have access to what i call discussion videos <laughs> basically um when you join patreon you can see all the videos that I have been have been published since the beginning of my Patreon page, so it's been um, over a year and a half now. And um, what we talk about is various topics, such as some uh, technique tutorials, some yarn reviews, some technical discussions on um, certain um, gauge uh, constructions, things like this. Um, so yeah, 
I, uh, this month, I made a video regarding triangular shawls. So basically, I talk about how the triangular shawls are constructed, the math that you need to do, how they are increased, basically, how they are shaped. I also give some tips regarding their uh, cast on, edges, binds off, and I also talk a little bit about how you can incorporate stitch motif in those shapes, because depending on what kind of shape you're making, uh, you have to put the stitches in differently. And it can be more or less easy. So yes, this is what this video is all about. In March, I did one with the rounded shape shawl. So it's the same principle. Basically, I explained to you how the shawls are built. I cast on to show you the first rows and to basically tell you what you will have to do all the way to the end of the shawl to have that shape. Um, basically, it makes it very easy for you to possibly make your own shawl uh, using simple motifs or anything that you would like to try. So this is the video for May. Uh, it's live now on Patreon. And uh, these videos are recorded in French. I speak in French, but I subtitle them myself in English. So you um, have proper <laughs> translation. Well, as proper as I can make it. You have, it's not a bot translation, basically. So, yes. And yeah, on Patreon, you also have a code so you can download one or two patterns of your choice amongst the patterns that I am selling on Ravelry and Payhip. So, um, yeah, these are what you can get on my Patreon page. The link to it is in the description down below. So if you want to check it out and see um, more clearly and more in details how it works and what you get for which tier. Again, it's um, it's a free go whenever you want. Basically, you can just come for one month if you choose to just have a pattern for this month. And if you're just curious and you want to see the previous discussions, you just join and then you can leave on the same month. You can stay for however long you want. There is no obligation uh, to stay for any duration of time at all. So yeah, if you are interested, uh, if you are interested in this month's topic, feel free to uh, join us. You will be very welcome over on Patreon. So yay! I think that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching it. I don't think I will make another podcast during the month of May because I I have stuff to do. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I will for sure see you in the beginning of June because June 1st is my birthday and I will have some things to show you. And um, yeah, but until then, have a lovely rest of the day, have a lovely evening, and I will see you next time.